what's up? I'm Liz, the Splitsay DIY, and today the Xylopie project continues. So in a previous video I talked about the project, but just to quickly recap, we're going to take a Raspberry Pi, we're going to take MIDI signals, send it to the Raspberry Pi. These will trigger solenoid motors that will be assigned to individual notes. These solenoids will be mounted over a key on the glockenspiel for 30 total solenoids. And basically what we'll get is this automated robot xylophone, similar to player pianos. It will be like a player glockenspiel, because this is not a xylophone, this is a glockenspiel. So uh, to, to accomplish this in the neatest way possible, I created some PCBs and I hinted at that in the previous video. Basically, what we have now is more spaghetti. Uh, we have a pie hat, although not a true pie hat. So in order to have a hat, there's actually specs that you have to fulfill. It has to have an EEPROM, has to have the cutouts for the different components that are on board on the hat. I'll link that uh, down below so that you can see. So just because it's hardware attached on top, it doesn't mean that it is a hat by definition. So. There's that. So I'm kind of half in spec right now. Like I have the mounting holes. I did achieve the cutout for the camera mount. I don't know if I want to make it like a true hat or not, but I digress. So basically on the hat, we have all the MIDI components. We have the MIDI jack. We have the circuitry for the MIDI to happen. And then we have the uh, two multiplexers that are going to allow us to over I squared C control the 30 solenoids. Otherwise, what a nightmare. So that's all squeezed in on top here. And then we have these little boards, uh, and basically one of these boards will be attached to each solenoid. Um, you have the circuit to drive a motor with diode and the transistor, and you'll see there's also two JST connectors on the boards. One of them is, of course, for the solenoid. It uses this like mini one because we're just using the 5 volt 1 amp solenoids that are very, very small. Uh, and then we have a larger JST connector that's actually going to be for the arcade buttons. And the way that this is wired up is that you can either have the signal coming from the Pi control the solenoid, or we can just use the button to trigger the solenoid. And then the power is daisy chained across the boards. Now, I haven't checked these yet. I don't know if, we're go if they're going to work. We're going to find out in this video. We're going to do it live. Okay, uh, I've got the hat on the Pi. Uh, I've got the ICs populated, the two 23017s and the opto isolator for the mini circuit. Uh, I've also got three solenoids plugged into the three driver boards, and I have three of these arcade buttons that w can uh, trigger the solenoids as well. Uh, this is just hooked up to 5 volt power for now, um, off of a dev board actually. I probably should have broken out some pins on the Pi. In its final form, it will have a dedicated power supply, possibly two dedicated power supplies, depending on how it all works out. So, all that's left now is to plug in the power supply for the Pi and see how it goes. There's going to be a couple things I'm looking at. Uh, first of all, if it boots properly and we get to the desktop, that means nothing is shorting anything out with the GPIO pins on the Pi. Success. And that's why everything's fully populated right now. I didn't want to give the chance that like maybe something shorting out on the second, as of right now, unused 23017. Uh, so if we get to the desktop, success one. Uh, success two will be when we add power to these driver boards and nothing shorts out and like the motors don't trigger on their own. And then the next success will be do the buttons, trigger the motors, and finally can we run our script that we'd been using previously with a MIDI controller. That was some fun perspective for you uh, and everything and is it still working? So is it working as expected? So yeah, we're going to be kind of looking for four things. Uh, so all that's left I guess is to uh, add power. Uh, one last thing, just for some perspective, all of this circuitry, although it looks a little spaghetti at the moment, is cleaning up this nonsense. So, kind of amazing when you think about it. And it actually involved additional breadboards to connect to the multiplexers that then connect up to I squared C. So keep that in mind. 
already this is a big step forward. Okay, so, okay, so we're plugging in. Here we go. We have boot lights on the Pi. Okay. 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 Cool. Step one. We're there. So now uh, let's add power to the solenoids. Okay, and they are just receiving power right now. Uh, okay. Oh. Okay. Well, that's not good. Oh, you know what? I screwed something up with these. Okay. Yeah, because this is supposed to... Let me unplug a button and see if the same behavior happens. It does. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I screwed something up with these. So, whoopsie. Let me unplug all the buttons, just in case. Maybe it's button related? Uh, no, okay. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try just having it grounded and seeing if I can get the script to work. So it's reading my MIDI input, so that's good. That means that that part is functional. Uh, I think something is wrong with these. Let me apply 5 volt and they engage. So that's not good. I did something. So I'm gonna have to look at my schematic. I mean, good news is that this is working without issue and that's definitely more complicated than this. No. Yeah. I screwed something up with the driver boards. It's almost like I wired it up so that this power input is acting as the button input, which I might have done. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to investigate that. But as I said, the good news is, and I'm looking at the readout on the screen, which I know that you can't really see, but maybe you can see that there is text. So you can see the shell here, and it's moving. That's, it's accepting notes, and they're the right notes. So that's good. Let's take a moment and reconvene when we've figured out what's going on with the driver boards. I think I know what the problem is. And in typical PCB issue fashion, it's really dumb. So when I was prototyping, I was referencing, um, Adafruit has a couple of these solenoid drivers from when they were doing all the cricket stuff. So I was following their circuit diagrams. And uh, so here's the, the MOSFET. MOSFETs have the gate drain source. That's what the different pins are called on it. So in this case, the gate is connected to the metro, or receiving the signal. Uh, the drain is connected to the diode, which is getting power and um, getting the motor and everything. And the source is ground. I hope I said that right. So gate, signal, drain to the diode, source to ground. So I'm, of course, using a surface mount MOSFET. Specifically this one. Let's look at the pinout. Gate, drain, source. So that means on this little part, when we're looking at it with its three pins, kind of shaped like a triangle, gate, drain, source. So that means that the signal from the pi be connected here, signal to the diodes connected here, and the signal from ground is here. Now let's look at my board layout. Well, I mean, it's been up here the whole time. Maybe you saw, oh look, oh look. Drain is connected to ground. <laughs> Gate is connected. Gate is right. Um, and then source is connected to the diode. And if we look here, so, so basically these two need to be swapped. <sighs> it's disappointing. So what I'm gonna do uh, just to make sure I'm not insane, is I'm gonna just desolder the MOSFET on the board. I'm gonna put two little pieces of jumper wire because I hate myself, and then I'm gonna connect, well, it'll be three actually, three pieces of jumper wire 
because I hate myself, and I'll make I'll cross these so this will actually connect to the top pin. This will connect to the side, and I'll see if it works. And if it does, then I'll know. And yeah, I mean at least with these boards, they're very 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 small, as you saw. And I was going to be more ordering more anyway, so I don't feel that wasteful. And I'm going to be adjusting this pin. But that's what this is. There there should be a, there's probably a German word out there uh, that describes what happens to your brain when you're designing a PCB. And uh, the worst part is, I wish I could tell you, oh, I didn't look at the data sheet. And then you could be like, well, aren't you a jerk? No, no, I did. I did look at the data sheet. <laughs> I did. I had, this o I had them all open. But that explains why we were getting a signal to the motor. This is reversed. That makes perfect sense. Of course it is. At first, I thought I must have screwed something up here, but I, I didn't. It was, it was here just swap these two. So uh, we'll return after that's done. It's going to be in a couple days.